Sup guys, Heeking here, bringing you a discussion video. Uh, before I start, uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Okay, seriously, don't just start the video and watch it and not like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, damn it. <laughs> and if you can, uh, give a shout out, a look at my uh, friend's channel, uh, Prez1990. Okay, he's just starting up. Uh, and yeah, he could he could use some help in in terms of views and subscribers. So give it a watch if you're into like video game discussions and news similar to mine. But yeah, today's topic we are going to talk about Metal Gear Solid remake. <laughs> time coming but uh we finally reached that point where yeah everything's getting a remake these days or a big massive remastered update so yeah metal gear solid remake plenty of rumors rumors essentially saying that a blue point is remaking it along with other rumors saying that we're getting a remake of the uh first three solid games wow if that's true, that's like, but I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening because, because honestly, you don't really need to remake MGS 2 or 3. You could, you could, and it, it would be pretty cool and amazing if they added certain concepts that weren't in the original games. But uh, mate, we're going to mainly talk about MGS 1. Now, before I do start, I will say that if they had to make a remake of a Metal Gear game, I, as I said, I, it was in the words, Metal Gear, not Metal Gear Solid. I would prefer it to be a Metal Gear remake and a Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake remake. Especially if Metal Gear was designed and done in a way that it makes it more of a sequel to MGS5 Phantom Pain in order to tie up some loose ends from that game while also, you know, adapting the original Metal Gear game while setting up Metal Gear 2 and have Metal Gear 2 sort of wrap everything else up and set up the events to come in the uh, next solid games essentially but yeah metal gear solid one remake is it coming i don't know mainly i just want to talk about what i would want for the remake to have and what i would change and what i would put in and what i would cut out etc etc i know it sounds like blasphemy here you know you know metal gear solid one is perfect yeah yeah i've played metal gear solid one many times it's one of my favorite games but looking at what they can improve with a lot of gameplay elements that we now have in games today, I'm curious what it could do. Obviously, this most likely isn't going to happen, but it would be interesting. So, let's start off then. Number one. Metal Gear Solid having an open world environment similar to Ground Zeroes or Phantom Pain. Imagine navigating Shadow Moses and having a lot more areas to be able to explore and navigate and designing the game in a way where you can't just go everywhere until you have the necessary item. In this case, I assume the key cards and maybe something else in order to make it feel more similar to something like a Metroidvania style game. Or hmm, what's the what's the closest thing I can relate this to? Uh, the Tomb Raider 2013 uh, reboot. You know, you're on the island, you're navigating it, but you need certain items to get through. Something like that, maybe. That would be kind of cool. You know, just a big open environment and just exploring and figuring your way out and having certain story elements pop up and activate there and there, you know, and not making it such a linear game, essentially. Number two. <laughs> So yeah, Johnny. Uh, I know, why am I bringing Johnny up? I mean, he's not that really a big of a... He is a big character, actually. In MGS4, he's a very big, important character. But if you guys remember in the original game, he's just sort of there as a joke. He gets his ass handed to him by Meryl. And the next time we see him, you know, he's guarding your cell. And you're escaping and you beat him up. And you can even kill him. So I think everyone would understand where I'm going with this. you 
done. You changed the future. You've created a time paradox. Time paradox. Imagine you're fighting Johnny and you snap his neck or kill him and you get a time paradox game over screen. That would be amazing. But also, I would like to see his character expanded upon in, in, in the first game. So, we know he likes Meryl, we know he ends up falling in love with her. If you played, you know, a lot of people say that uh, eh, that aspect came out of nowhere in MGS4, but in reality, it was set up in MGS2. If you got Johnny's cameos in MGS2, he only, only went on and on about Meryl. Especially with him saying how she's a beautiful woman, etc, etc, and just being sort of a chill guy, actually, when he let Emma... Go on, go on about and not try and capture her or kill her. So, yeah, the, the elements were there set up already that Johnny is, is you know, enticed. You know, he still remembers Meryl. Uh, he's gobsmacked by her and he, he seems like a chill guy, actually, after the events of Shadow Moses. So, yeah, I would like to see that expanded. I would like the idea of when maybe Meryl is captured, you have Johnny being sort of the one uh, tending to... Uh, and helping her maybe ends up uh playing some sort of role where he ends up rescuing her and we get a scene of that maybe that would be kind of cool actually um yeah i would like to see that sort of done to sort of dwell and develop that the relationship that we will end up getting in the future metal gear solid uh full storyline so yeah i would like that i would like johnny's role expanded number three <laughs> Cyborg Ninja. So yeah, the Cyborg Ninja is a character you only ever fight once in the game and you encounter him uh, maybe once if you can't escape the cell. He'll end up coming in and saving your butt uh, if you've failed to get out using other options. And then he appears one more time in the end to help you against Metal Gear Rex in a cutscene and then he dies and that's it. That's the end of his character. He's built up in the very beginning and then he, you fight him and then he disappears. And that's it really. I would like the ninja to have more of a recurring role. You know, his whole shtick basically is him coming to Shadow Moses in order to fight Snake. I would like for him to basically be this sort of a nemesis character that haunts you throughout Shadow Moses. You know, at any given point, randomly, he can show up in certain sections and you basically have to escape because he's, you know, you're in tight corridor spaces. You can't really fight him in that area. There's guards everywhere. He's going to, you know, he's going to slice you up and he's going to appear, kill some guards and he's going to go after you and you have to escape. And if you're in big open environments, maybe like the snow field or an expanded area of the snow field where you're just sort of going through, he can show up and start attacking you and you have to fight him and beat him or escape basically and depending on what happens he'll he'll leave he'll leave you alone basically he'll run away and he'll come back later again and for the love of god i want you know an explanation for that arp cannon because that that comes out of nowhere so you know include that in in the fight when we get it so yeah i want the ninja to appear multiple times in the game and to have him be this stalkerish type of character would be awesome it could even be similar to the end fight really like you get to a certain point and he's there and you're trying to navigate and escape him that would be pretty cool speaking of boss fights number four <laughs> so yeah the boss fights in mgs1 are pretty simple you know uh, a lot of unique fights in that game they're all great it has some of the best boss designs uh, next to mgs3 and maybe, maybe MGS4 that has some good idea ones there. MGS2 aren't, for me personally, aren't as memorable as those particular games. But I would like the boss fight expanded and added to in a certain way. For example, uh, Revolver Ocelot, as we know, can do CQC. You know, he's an expert in CQC. He fought Big Boss multiple times in MGS3. He knows how to do CQC. And obviously, he know, you know, he uses it at the end of uh, MGS4 in his final fight. I like the idea that you can, you know, when you're doing these boss fights, you know, in the original game, you could actually run and gun. You know, I, I don't know if a lot of people knew this, but you can run and gun in that game. And it makes that boss fight with Robo Ocelot so much more easier. Instead of just standing in the place and trying to shoot him, you can run and gun and essentially be done with that boss fight in seconds. But you can also catch up to Robo Ocelot and he'll just sort of hit you maybe, maybe for a flashbang. I'm not too sure if that actually happens or not. But, um... Uh, I like the idea of being able to catch up to Rover Ocelot 
and him just kicking your ass with CQC. You know, you're doing your normal close quarters combat and he'll just, you know, counter attack that with CQC and just knock your ass to the ground and you can't fight him to the point where it's basically you can't fist fight this guy. You know, he's using a very direct method and you need to stick with your guns essentially and, and, and try and shoot him from the corners. And then obviously Psycho Mantis, I would keep that fight the same or expand on it more to make that more crazy and more visually insane uh, and use certain features related to that console for the for that point in time. Um, Sniper Wolf, I would probably make it similar to the uh, end fight or quiet fight. You know, you're trying to get to her and she escapes and you have to, you know, you just have to make yourself go forward, uh, especially with the snow fight. Uh, the first fight, I don't know what you could really do with that because it's all basically in one straight area. So I don't know if you could try and sneak your way up and take cover behind those corners there. And, sh and as you get closer, you get more of a better aim, but it also becomes more dangerous because the closer you get, the more likely she can just one shot kill you. That would be an interesting feature in terms of the fact that you, you know, if you're far, you're you're more like you're less likely to get killed straight away. The closer you are, the more impact it's gonna have in terms of that bullet just blowing you away. Essentially, uh, that makes sense. And yeah, um, that's really I can fit. That's all I can really think about. I don't know how much more you could expand the fights, uh, the other fights uh, especially. But yeah, um, it will be interesting just to see what more they can do with it. <sighs> Number five. <laughs> environmental elements in the game so environmental elements what i mean by that is you know it takes place in an icy snow island i like the idea of a snow blizzard okay i like the idea that you're you have to go outside more and there's just going to be a blizzard hitting you and you have to get through the area as fast as you can otherwise you're going to freeze to death and I also like the concept of the ninja chasing you because imagine you're in, in a big open environment. It's snowing like crazy. You're trying to navigate your way through. Uh, you're trying to find the right path. Your health is just sort of dropping because you're freezing. Your rations are freezing. You can't use them. And then you've got like uh, enemies or wolves or, or the ninja uh, hiding away in the bl blizzard coming after you. And you're trying to just escape essentially to save your life. And that will be sort of a cool kind of thing to do uh other areas i don't really know what more other areas you could add really that's like the only main thing that comes into my mind um i would probably add um a lake or something in the original mgs4 there was supposed to be uh, an extra environment that you could na na navigate where one of the geckos would break on the ice and fall down i like the idea that you can probably sneak through these big uh, sw uh swim section areas and maybe put enemies through the ice and that that would be kind of cool new different concepts in terms of environmental areas and that so and elements and that so that would be kind of cool to do or and to see uh, swimming missions yeah like imagine you have to get through like uh, a sewer system or something and it's located on the wall so you go through that to get through there so that would be kind of cool and different to do number six Am I, am I doing that right? Number six or number six? <laughs> Cassette tapes or flashback cutscenes or videos uh, detailing more of the lore and set up for future games. So we, we, we know in uh, from MGS4 that, for example, the DARPA chief was actually Sigurd from MGS3 and Ocelot ended up torturing and killing him because he knew his identity as a patriot. I like the idea of getting these exclusive unlockable tapes or cutscenes where you see those interactions. You see Ocelot interacting with Sigurd before he died. So we get a bit of Sigurd there. Uh, maybe a flashback or a cassette tape detailing how Ocelot, you know, meets and kills McDonald Miller. And we get some sort of conclusion to the uh, rivalry or relationship from MGS5 in that when he dies and kills him, uh, backstory on the ninja, on Grey Fox and Naomi being explained, you know, stuff like that, stuff like that, that explains certain things, flashbacks maybe with Big Boss and Solid Snake training or talking and him revealing that he is his dad, etc, etc, stuff like, uh, a paramedic uh, dr clark experimenting on gray fox and getting cassette tapes like that or maybe that whole incident where it's revealed that he killed her and, and naomi helped hide the body maybe something like a cassette tape you're listening to it and you get that entire sequence or what it's done in a, you know, like i said it's done in a cassette tape or it's done in a flashback maybe you see it and you get more of these characters you get more of the setup uh a cassette tape with uh, george sears aka solidus and ocelot interacting setting up 
the events of MGS2 and other events as well. You know, more stuff with Oslo, obviously, and uh, stuff hinting to the events of MGS3, etc., etc. And the Patriots, of course, being more involved as well because they just sort of come out of nowhere in MGS2 and then the, they're like the main threat in that game and MGS4. But obviously, just setting up... The, um, mainly, I'm talking about the AI, of course, but uh, setting that aspect up more. So that will be cool to see. Golukovic, you know, having, having a cassette tape or a phone call or something with Oslo talking to him. That would be great. Those little elements expanded upon would be awesome in a game. Um, yeah, I would like to see that. I would like to see those aspects in it for a remake if it is done, essentially. And then, of course, number seven. Number seven. Hmm. Number seven. Really? I, uh, I think that's it, really. I think those are the main things I would want in a MGS remake, really. I think I've said all I can really say. Um, anything else would be gameplay elements from the previous games, maybe like uh, upgrading weapons, being able to assemble different weapons, and then and that's if and that's if the remake ends up being this big game where you could essentially do that. Because in the original MGS game, uh, you only have like what five weapons: you have the SOCOM, you have the Farmers, uh, sniper rifle, the Nikita missiles, the the Stinger missiles, and that's it. Those are your five main uh, gun options essentially. But it would be kind of cool if you. If you got more weapons and you you were able to customize them essentially, but yeah, that would be that would be kind of cool to do, and yeah, that's really all I can think about at this point. And that's it. That's really I think all I would want from an MGS one remake. Um, yeah, yeah. Tell me what you guys think. Do you think that will be awesome? Do you find do you think an MGS one remake is even necessary? To be honest, I think it is because it, it is an old game. And to be honest, Twin Snakes, no one really includes Twin Snakes, to be honest, because it wasn't, it wasn't that, uh, what's the word, uh, recepted well? I mean, it has its moments, obviously, some of the cutscenes are a bit over the top, but I do like some of the ninja cutscenes, but the overall gameplay was, it was way too easy, it made boss fights way too easy, so I would like to see them sort of try and fix that aspect, essentially. And to make those fights harder and to maybe cut down on certain elements in that game. But overall, I would like to see this reimagined remake of MGS1, essentially. Obviously, the main story beats would, this beat would be the same. Uh, number eight. Uh, one more thing, number eight. Uh, expansion on certain characters. Uh, to be honest, this would be included in my other stuff that I mentioned beforehand. But uh, I'm thinking of characters that we didn't really, like I said, get a lot of time with. Like I said, uh, Darpa Chief Sigurd, you know, give him more of a role behind the scenes. But also a Decoy Octopus. This is a character who appears once and then he's dead and then you find out, oh, he was Decoy Octopus. Give this man more to do in the game. You know, make him feel like a friend. Maybe you have a sequence where he pretends to be Meryl. And, you know, you, you, you know, you think he's your ally, but then he start you know, she starts attacking you and that. And it's not because of Mantis, it's because of Octopus. And you find out and you realize, holy crap, this is Octopus. This is a Meryl. Holy crap. Uh, and you have to decide whether you want to beat this guy up or hurt him or whatever. Oh, uh, and, and I don't know. Like, that would be interesting to do. Like, I want more with Decoy Octopus, basically, because he's just a very big non-factor in the original game. Really. He's just there once for this twist and that's it. Um, that would be cool to sort of expand on and other characters as well, like I've already mentioned. But yeah, that's it really. That's all I can think of <laughs> at this point. So yeah, guys, uh, remember to like and subscribe, whatever. Uh, I shall see you when I shall see you. I hope you liked this uh, video discussion. Tell me your thoughts down below. And yeah, uh, I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.